Jesus. You know, uh, I think about our daily walk and our daily conversations. And, 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 and this question popped in my mind. If you just had a big public outburst in Walmart, for instance, and shouted, hallelujah, he's done it again. What do you think the reaction of the crowd would be to your outburst? Pardon? He got COVID. <laughs> How many of you have received a blessing, though, and had the opportunity to shout and didn't? And say, and say, I wish I had. I wish I had just let go. And sometimes when the Spirit moves us to acknowledge that God has done something special for us, another Spirit says, the crowd, they ain't going to like that. Huh? Which one of those voices do we listen to? The one, the one that says, let it out, or the one that says, keep it in? Amen. I'm not going to keep you long this morning, but I want you to, I want you to deal with, uh, for a minute, the mirror that says, I'm talking about Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, that's one of the problems that most, most believers have in uh, acknowledging Christ is that in public we think we're going to be ridiculed if I let people know what he's done for me. But you're talking to somebody that's been in that situation before in in, in particular in Walmart, when a hallelujah just could, wouldn't stay on the inside and it burst forth, and all of a sudden, people from all over the store were trying to find out what it was that caused a hallelujah to break in the store. Amen? There was nobody criticizing and saying, uh, you have to take that back to your church. No. They wanted to know what the praise was all about. I got good news to tell you. I got good news. You know, uh, I was listening to a song that we were playing this morning. Uh, just, before, just before service. Let me see if I can find the words to that thing here right quick. And the, and the, and the words of the song was like this. It says, God is the joy and the strength of my life. He re removes all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never, ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray. Stay in that narrow way. Keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never turn back. God is my all in all. Now, what's important about that? It's an acknowledgement of who God is to me. You know, and I ask believers sometimes, who is God to you? Not, not who God, who is God, but who is God to you? And I think this is one of the struggles that believers have in dealing with unsaved people. It's when they get a question and they can't put a finger on the answer. Oftentimes we feel that we've come under attack for somebody, well, okay, who is God to you? Oh. I'm stuck. 
if I say the wrong thing, what are they going to think of me? Huh? You see, the answer, though, is not to shut up. The answer sometimes comes in a little song like this that we've committed to memory. Lord, I tell you, you won't, you won't know how many times a song that I learned in church growing up was what became my deliverance in a bad situation. You have to understand, now, I'm 4,000 miles away from home. I ain't got nobody right there. And this is before cell phones. You used to have to book a call to overseas call. You know, if you... And, 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 and then, you know, you got a long line of people in front of you calling. It depends on how, how long they stay on the line before you can get a call across the Atlantic. But God is the joy and the strength of my life. There, there, there are two adjectives there that you could, he's, my, he's both my joy and my strength. If you've been healed, yes. some folk know him as a healer. Yes. And when somebody put the question, I know he can heal. Oh, yes. And you run up, you come across people all the time. Marriage is going bad. Relationship, girlfriend, boyfriend thing, going bad. Money going bad. How often do you say, try Jesus He's all right. You, you, you see, that's what they need at the time you hear the problem. Now, if you won't share it, do you have a problem? Huh? You know, there's a scripture that says, my people perish, no, or, or my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And you just full of it. How do I know you're full of it? Because you come to church every Sunday. We pouring into you. Some, you absorbing something here. Why won't you share that when you get out? Huh? Because God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because they have rejected knowledge, God says, I also will reject thee. Ooh, that's terrible, isn't it? What, what, what was he saying? He, he wasn't saying that, that they're not, they don't have access to the knowledge. What he's saying is they do have access to it and they won't share it. That's what Christ was talking about when he said, don't hide your light under a bushel because he referred to all the knowledge that he brought down from heaven as light. And he brought it into this world of darkness and he imparted it to those of us who call ourselves the saints of God. Amen? My people are destroyed. God has another command that he gives to you though. Study. Study. Study unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly, di rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to get into the word. You see, this is not something that you open on Sunday only. You know, and some people have some people have a bad habit of doing that. That's a bad habit. You know, when, when, when you want to get rid of a bad habit, you replace it with something else, amen? Now, your bad habit might be sitting in front of that TV for two, six hours every day. Huh? You need to get one of them hours up to study. Amen? Place, replace, replace that bad habit with a good habit. Look. I'm going to ask you a question. Now, how many of you have a family member who's still lost out there in the world, not saved yet? Anybody in here got somebody like that? 
how are you going to reach out to them? This is the answer. To all, uh, there, there, there's not a problem that you can come up with that's not covered in here. And I dare you to bring me one. I dare you to bring me a problem that God has not already addressed in his word. He's talking to you. My little fella there is something else. You know, there were several people in Scripture who made their relationship with God, or spoke about their relationship with God as being personal. Moses said, the Lord is my strength. He's my song. He's my salvation. He's my God. He's my father. Samuel had a like uh, description of God. David had the longest list of names that he called God. He's my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my strength. He's my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my shepherd, my light, my salvation, the strength of my life, shield. He's my shield. He's my glory. He's the rock of my strength. He's my king. He's my defense. The God of my mercy, the Lord is my king. The rock of my refuge, the Lord is my everlasting strength, and the Lord is my song. Now, that was the longest list by any of the prophets of who God personally, what, who God personally was to them. Okay, how many adjectives do you have for who God personally is to you this morning? How many names can you name that God has been to you? I can name him as lawyer. I can name him as lawyer. He's been my lawyer. No, I I'm telling you, he was my lawyer in the courtrooms of D.C., Baton Rouge, Wichita, Kansas, Washington, D.C., God was my lawyer. Charlotte, North Carolina. God was the lawyer that went into court with me. Never lost a case. See, I can testify that he never lost a case because he never lost one of mine. Healer. Two, two, three years, two, two years ago, three years ago, I was in atrium. And when I went in, they didn't expect me to come out. This was before this corona thing. That's why I've been afraid of this corona thing didn't bother me. It never bothered me because the Lord told me, I'm your healer. I believe him. I believe him. I ain't, I put on a mask. I ain't shut down. I didn't stop going any place I had to go. Why? He told me that he could heal me. And when I read in his word that I won't put in, put the diseases on you that I put on these, I, I, I believe him. Jeremiah had only one personal with the Lord. He said, the Lord is my portion. And maybe that's, the, maybe that's the reason he only had one, because that covers a lot of stuff. The Lord is my portion. Habakkuk said, God is my strength. He only had one. Zechariah one. The Lord is my God. And only one New Testament person made a personal, and that was Paul. Paul said, the Lord is my witness, the Lord is my record, and the Lord is my helper. Amen. Who is he to you? 
Who will you tell folk that ask you, who is God to you? Well, I just got one more thing to say, and then I'm going to sit down. Some folk may ask me. Some folk may say, who is this Jesus you talk about every day? He is my Savior. He set me free. Now listen while I tell you what he means to me. How oft I'm tempted, but praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, through his holy word, I'm more than a conqueror. I've Jesus within. I'm living in victory over Satan and sin. He fills my soul with joy along life's way. He thrills me through and through each night and day. Anoints my head with oil. My cup overflows before I call in prayer my Jesus he knows from earth to glory he's all I need my breath my sunshine my friend indeed my joy my peace my life eternity through he is my everything now how about you he is my everything he is my all he is my everything both great and small he gave himself for me he made everything new he is my everything now how about you let last he is my everything he is my, he is my all he is my everything he is my everything both great and small, both great and small. He gave himself, he gave himself for me. Made everything, everything new. He is my everything. Now how about you? Amen. Amen. All we have to do is prepare a little bit and we can make a great difference in the lives of the people around us. It doesn't take much to get into a conversation even with people who don't want to talk about Jesus or think they don't want to talk about Jesus. Amen? Because they all need him. We all need him. And we need to share him because that's the commission that he has given to us. Amen. Learn all you can about him. I feel the day is coming and short to be here when you're going to need to know a lot more than you do right now. Amen. So don't forget about our Wednesday night Bible study, our Thursday afternoon uh, Sunday school study, and any other studies that you uh, would be able to attend, amen, Bible study. And now, 
May the grace of our once crucified, dead, buried, risen, and ascended Savior rest, rule, and abide with you, his people, now and forevermore. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen.